Welcome back, and I am glad that you can join me for another problem-solving video. In past videos, I shared how to effectively teach how to solve word problems involving multiplication and division, along with some useful resources. Today's video will focus on how to help students distinguish between multiplication and division word problems. When given a mix of multiplication and division word problems, students may sometimes become confused with which operation to choose. So having ample opportunities to solve both types of problems is important. To help students to be able to effectively distinguish between the two, they must be able to identify the actions involved in both operations and determine the overall situation, recognizing that both operations refer to equal groups. As you can see here in our signal words chart, both multiplication and division word problems tend to refer to equal amounts or groups and often include the signal word each. However, in contrast, multiplication requires you to find the total where equal amounts will be combined, whereas with division, you're given a total and it is being separated into equal groups. Before we dig into it, as a reminder, we will be using the CUBES problem solving strategy to help students think through the process of determining the correct operation to use. This problem solving think sheet serves as a great scaffold for beginners when it comes to using the CUBE strategy to solve word problems. However, with more experience, this will no longer be necessary. And for the purpose of this video, we will see how we can continue to use a cube strategy to distinguish between multiplication and division word problems. Now let's work through using the cube strategy to solve this word problem. It reads, Chris baked three trays of muffins. Each tray holds eight muffins. How many muffins did Chris bake in all? After the first reading, remind students to take time to think about what's taking place in the word problem. Discourage students from being so quick to use the cube strategy right away. Only after the second reading should they resume with each step in the cube strategy. After the second reading, students should then circle the important numbers that will be needed to solve the word problem and to cross out each letter as you move along the process. Next, we will underline the question that we will be solving and then look for action words that will need to be boxed. Each is an action word. However, it's important to remind students that it's found in both multiplication and division word problems. Again, you can help students distinguish between the two by reminding them that multiplication requires you to find the total, whereas division, the total is already given. The phrase in all is another expression that we definitely want to box, and we'll go ahead and cross out the B. The next step is E, where we evaluate the problem. In other words, we think deeply about it to determine which operation is needed to solve for it. We've already narrowed it down to multiplication or division, since the signal word each denotes that objects are being grouped. However, the fact that we also are trying to find the total helps us to determine that multiplication is the best operation needed to solve for this problem. And the last step of the cube strategy requires us to solve for it. However, for the purpose of this video, we will skip this part. Let's try another problem. Assuming that we've already read it at least once, and after our second reading, we're going to go ahead and resume with the cube strategy. It reads, while playing volleyball, the winning team scored 21 points by halftime. If each person scored seven points, how many people were playing? The C in the cube strategy reminds us to circle the important numbers that we will need in order to solve this problem. Now, identifying the question, how many people were playing? Moving on to the B, we're now going to box any important action words. Each already helps us to narrow down our options. It signals that something is being grouped and the two operations that are involved with that is multiplication or division. With this in mind, we're now ready to start evaluating the word problem more closely. We already know that the team has a total of 21 points and that each person scored seven points. So we can see that in this problem, the total number of points is already given. We're not trying to find the total, and with that being the case, division is the best operation to use for this problem. In summary, here are a few important things to keep in mind. When it comes to distinguishing between multiplication and division, remember that both operations involve equal groups. However, the difference between them is that they're opposite operations. With multiplication, equal groups are being combined, whereas with division, an amount is separated into equal groups. When reading a word problem, Students need to recognize that when an equal number of groups plus the number in each group is given and finding the total is required, then multiplication should be used. However, 
With division, if the total is given and the amount is being separated into equal groups and either the number of groups or the number in each group needs to be determined, then division should be used. Having a good understanding of this, along with repeated practice and identifying the actions involved in both operations, will help students to reason more effectively and accurately distinguish between when to multiply or divide when solving word problems. And as always, thank you for watching and feel free to share with your colleagues. To continue to support my channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.